feeling at the moment? Cabin fever. Have you got it yet? <laughs> I haven't got cabin fever. I've still been walking into our shop. We've still been trying to service clients with their communications needs. But I've certainly been talking to a few people who are a bit stuck in where they are and they're stuck at their home and they've ran out of Netflix shows to watch. They've finished mowing the lawn. They've almost started painting the house now. It's getting that desperate. I, know. I had a mate of mine who jumped on Facebook the other day and said, I'm absolutely bored. I'm playing GTA 5 online. I didn't even know he was a gamer. But apparently he plays <laughs> GTA that's uh, Grand Theft Auto. It's a video game for anyone playing at home doesn't know what it is. But uh, look, if you need something else to kind of simulate yourself, why not go on virtual tours? Exactly right. And the, the imagery that we see on so many landmarks around the world now is so good that it probably is almost as good as actually going there. And you don't have to worry about the lineups. You don't have to worry about the exorbitant prices going into some of those various exhibitions or displays around the world. So there's been a top 10 list of places that people are using to go on a virtual tour. Number one place that people are going to is Diagon Alley. Obviously not a real place, but somewhere for all those Harry Potter fans out there, it's somewhere you can go and visit. Number two, I, I think would be a great place to visit. I've never visited this place, but CERN the scientific research facility that basically where they try and smash atoms together and do a whole bunch of research around the speed of light and can they get things going faster than the speed of light i think that'd be a fantastic place to visit the roman Colosseum, because you can't go anywhere in italy right now that's that's definitely well, that's exactly right yeah no the roman Colosseum will be a while before anyone goes there again so so going to the roman Colosseum virtually i think would be absolutely fantastic a Google data center. I mean, what a great place to go if you're a bit of an IT nerd and look inside a Google data center. Yeah, sure. You could, you could probably find your own junk there. <laughs> Just go, wow, <laughs> they're keeping right. that on me. It's like, seriously. <laughs> you could go and look at all your own data there, perhaps, with some of the data issues they've had. Can you pull up what yeah. I did on the 24th of September, 2012? I, uh, it was an important day. Oh, yeah. But uh, Kennedy exactly. Space Center, uh, you can go on a virtual tour of a TARDIS? No way. <laughs> I'm assuming that it's a very large virtual tour of the TARDIS. The TARDIS, of course, being used by Doctor Who, size of a phone box on the outside, on the inside, uh, using the fourth dimension, I think, from memory from the old Doctor Who days. Then it's uh, obviously much larger on the inside than it is on the outside. So that'd be a cool little virtual tour to go. Everest Base Camp, I, I'm, I'm not that fascinated with climbing Mount Everest, but obviously many people are each year. I think the way to climb the Everest or to Everest base camp would be from the comfort of your lounge room rather than going there for real. Yeah, yeah, you can't get to Nepal either at the moment. So, uh, but yeah, the Louvre, the Sistine Chapel is another place you won't get anywhere in the next 12 months. And uh, the International Space Station. Is there a live feed yeah. of the International Space Station that you can actually watch as well? Uh, there is a live feed, the International Space Station, exactly right, but you can also do a virtual tour there. So you can go and look around the International Space Station, have a look what's there. Uh, again, fairly cramped environment. You might do it from, say, under your bed, just so that you really feel like the astronauts do in the International Space Station, or cluttered up there, maybe put on a few layers of clothing, because it'd be pretty hard to move with some of the clothing that you wear as an astronaut. So look, again, these are a top 10 list. I'd be interested to hear what your listeners have to say about that top 10, or whether they've got a better top 10 list or some other entries for that top 10 list of places to go on a virtual tour. Yeah, the International Space Station, that, that would have to be the safest guys anywhere in this galaxy right now. But I, I wonder if, <laughs> if they ever talk to anyone, they get sick of people jumping on there and going. <sighs> That's my impression of space. Well, I thought that was your impression of Darth Vader. Yeah, six of one, half a dozen of the other. He lives in space. <laughs> So I'm, I'm sure they've probably had a couple of Darth Vader, Vader and space jokes over the years. But look, why not get on there and try it again? I know. I'll have to polish up on my gags before I go and do that one. Um, there is no sure. sport anywhere in the world. Um, I was seeing the other day, Matt, the Belarusian Soccer League was the only one that was still going last week. And they were actually getting TV rights for it because um, it was the only sport <laughs> being played in the world. But uh, apparently that's getting shut down now. But um, if you're a gambler during the coronavirus, um, you you got to sit there and go, what do I do? You'd be feeling a bit desperate, wouldn't you? And, and look, I think it's a bit of a stretch calling soccer a sport anyway. The Belarusian Soccer League is going one step further. No, no, no. Don't go calling this soccer a sport thing. I'm Greek. I'm Greek. No, no, no. We're not getting into that argument. 
<laughs> right, I'll, I'll leave that one and we'll move on. So some of the things that people are betting on now. Yes, leave that one alone. So, but, so some of the things people are betting on now, reality TV. So there's, there's people that they're so obsessed with gambling, they're, they're looking for anything to bet on. So what's going to happen in a various, or various reality TV shows that are going on around the world? They're betting on that. Uh, it even got to the point now where they're betting on Russian table tennis. Obviously, you can be one and a half metres apart in table tennis. You can compete with that social isolation there, and that's fantastic. But I don't know that people would know a lot about the form guides in terms of what's happening with table tennis. So you can go and put some bets on some Russian table tennis at the moment. You know what? I'm, I, I'm a man. I'm going to say this. Considering we all know what Russian women like, can you imagine if there's a female league of that? Sorry, I, I just I, had to uh, go there. I, I'm not even going to comment on that. <laughs> I, I'd bet on Svetlana. I don't even know what her form is, but heck, I'd put five bucks on her if, if I had to. But um, yeah, <laughs> casinos are shut. Look, no, for the um, for the gambling houses around, they, they need to get creative to kind of survive in this COVID-19 world, don't they? Well, I think just creating some novelty things to, to gamble on, like reality TV. Uh, that relies on people watching reality TV. I'm not the biggest fan, but obviously many people are fans of it. But you might start betting on the weather, for example. You might start betting on a whole range of things. And I think you're right. In this whole world we're living in now, it's all about being creative. It's about being innovative. And, and maybe it's not a bad idea that some people have had a, a bit of a gambling problem, take a bit of a break away from gambling. But... The, the gambling organisations, they're just going to keep coming up with different things for us to bet on. I know, right? My, my grandpa was a prolific better, but we all had odds on money. The only reason he went to the TAB every weekend was to get away from my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were the great bickerers of all time, my grandpa and grandma. <laughs> I think he just used to that, go and that, put five. That may well have been the case. I think he just I'm used sure to go. he wouldn't be the first one. No, <laughs> uh, I'm going. I'm going for a walk. Five bucks on the fourth at uh, Randwick. Thanks. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, this is interesting and non-corona kind of related. But BMW, they're uh, going for a few s fuel cell of a different kind, aren't they, Matt? Well, there's a, obviously a lot of discussion around the world on different sources of fuel for vehicles. And not that, again, we, we so much focus on COVID-19 at the moment, but this is one that's a little bit separate from that. And although most manufacturers are, are going for electric versions, so many manufacturers have got electric versions of vehicles coming out, the BMW solution is potentially a fuel cell. Now, we've talked about fuel cells in the past in the car industry, and hydrogen obviously is a, is a great form of of fuel because the energy that you get out of it is fairly compact, fairly dense. So one of the problems with batteries is you've got a large amount of storage area for lesser potential distance you can travel. Hydrogen is better than petrol in terms of the fuel density you've got out of it and it's still relatively green in terms of what you get out of it. At the end of it is just water. You get basically some H2O drops out the end of your tailpipe if you do even have a tailpipe. So that's great. So BMW started going down this path and, and they're talking about some great performance because what actually happens with a fuel cell vehicle is it's effectively an electric car, but instead of having a battery to store your power, you have hydrogen to store the power. So it, it acts like an electric car. You've got that instant acceleration. You've got all that torque available to you, but you can just go further distances. So we're probably talking about maybe in the vicinity of 2022, you'll start to see something from BMW probably won't ramp up to production until maybe 2025, but you'll start to see some of those vehicles coming out around 2022. And the first one, he's talking about a 374 horsepower, sorry, sorry to use imperial measurements here, not metric, but 374 horsepower version of one of the BMWs, which again, is it's pretty exciting. So that's a hell of a lot of horsepower from an alternative fuel cell. And, and look, I, I've, I've said this to you before, and I know you're a driver of an electric car, and I, I kind of dig that, but... I think as a race, we need to start looking at alternatives now because um, I think we've gone as far as we can with the old fossil fuels and I think we need to see a very viable alternative and someone needs to come up with one fairly quickly. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and people are working on alternatives. Electric cars, obviously, something that's very popular with a range of manufacturers. Obviously, Tesla leading the way there. But you've got companies like Porsche who are producing the Porsche Cayenne, a very much a performance-oriented vehicle, trying to take on Tesla in the performance game. But Hyundai and Kia, a whole range of manufacturers, are producing variations of electric vehicles. But again, it may well be that the long-term solution is 
hydrogen fuel cell, this, the electric vehicles are a good stepping stone in that direction. Let's get people thinking about this differently rather than continue just to dig up oil or find oil and then just burn it in vehicles. I, we were actually in Sydney a couple of weeks ago for uh, medical purposes, essential medical purposes. Um, but um, I actually saw a Porsche Cayenne hybrid and I was like, what? And, and I came up with the great slogan, Porsche Cayenne hybrid. When you want to tell the world you have too much money. <laughs> if you can afford a Porsche Cayenne hybrid, you know you just got too much money. <laughs> <laughs> you may well be right there, but they've actually moved on from the hybrid now and they've actually got an all electric version of the Cayenne as well. So I think pretty exciting. And again, they're trying to take on Tesla directly. They're doing some performance tests around some famous racetracks around the world. So they're trying to take them on and Tesla is going to respond with their latest vehicle that comes out to make sure they can compete with the Porsche. So again, that, that, drive to be better than someone else means it's better for all of us in consumer land. Yeah, it is. It is. It's cool. Now, uh, people are looking for a million ways to entertain themselves at the moment. And uh, look, apps are the, are the big thing because you, you know, and I know, Matt, the, the phone is pretty much glued to our hands, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and look, you so, pick it up, you're looking for an app, you go, and there's a uh, good one that is uh, going gangbusters at the moment. Of course, ScoMo has banned the house party. You can't invite a few friends around to watch the footy. Hold on, the footy's not on, so it doesn't matter about inviting a few friends around to watch the footy, but you can't even have a few friends around for a beer. In fact, today when I, when I was driving to the office, I saw one of our neighbours there where they were sitting out in the driveway, they had another friend over to visit, and they were sitting probably three metres apart with a little esky there, a couple of beers, and making sure they had that good distance between the two of them while they sat there and had a couple of beers together. So people are taking note, they're not having house parties, but you can have a virtual house party now and the, the app is called, surprisingly enough, House Party. So you can organise a virtual house party with House Party, invite a few friends around. You do have to be careful of the security when you set up the virtual house party. You're probably exposing more of your details and more of your friends' details and maybe is appropriate. So be careful of those security settings, but you can have that virtual house party, invite a few people around, talk about not much in particular, you probably end up talking about COVID for most of the conversation, have some beers at your end, have some beers at the other end, really try and generate that same vibe of a house party, but do it each person in their own house. Right, gotcha, it's interesting. I, I'm reading here, apparently there's reports around that Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, has, a, has an account for house party, are you serious? <laughs> There's a whole range of things that, that, that are happening. And, and I think the, the really exciting thing about all of this is that um, you do find someone like the Duchess of Cornwall with an account, but you find a whole bunch of friends that might have an account. And the, the good part is, in the past, you might have gone to a house party with your friend around the corner or up the street, but you can have friends now that are anywhere in the world and join in that house party. So it might actually, in some strange way, bring the world closer together. Yeah, lovely. Interesting thought. That's what we need. More virtual kind of bringings together, which is, which is what we all kind of need right now. <laughs> That's exactly right. The really interesting question, and I haven't got the answer for this one, is what will happen when we return to normal, whatever normal might be in the future. But some of the things that we've learned out of this in terms of creating some virtual environments, some virtual groups, virtual house parties, how many of those things will continue on? Will more people work from home? Will be there less commuting when we get back to the, the normal world? Uh, hopefully we learn a few things out of this and actually change some of our behaviour. I, I don't think I'm ready to go outside yet, Matt. I, I've seen what the real world's like through my window and it's a scary place. Do you know you can catch a virus that can kill you? Like, That's right. I, I don't know if, I want to, if I'm ready to go back into that world. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just stay here. It's much safer. It's cozier. <laughs> come, come to yeah. our house, Matt, because the fridge gets filled like magically. Like every time I open it, there's food in it. It's, it's a wonderful place. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it sounds great. I know.